Hi guys, Rob Madsen here. I'm going to be showing you guys around my implementation of Conway's Game of Life. Something I put together over winter break between the fall 2014 and the spring 2015 semesters. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Conway's Game of Life, it's a game played on a grid. It's actually being played out right here in the background. Uh, it's a game that's zero player. So zero player in the sense that all the user does is set up the initial conditions of the board and lets the rules of the game determine what each successive iteration of the game is. So any cell on the board can either be alive or dead. It can be one or zero. And any cell has eight adjacent neighbors, up, down, left, right, and the four diagonals. So the rules of the game are as follows. If a cell is alive, and it has zero or one alive neighbors, then it dies on the next game iteration. If a cell is alive with two or three neighbors, then it stays alive for the next iteration. If a cell is alive with more than three neighbors, if it has four, five, six, seven, or eight neighbors, then it dies on the next iteration. If any cell on the board is dead with exactly three neighbors, then the cell turns from dead to alive. Okay, so here we go. This is my implementation of Conway's Game of Life. So the entry point of the function, main. The first thing that main does is make sure that I've entered an input map, entered a actual map for the game to be played out. This is where the actual user player input would come from. This is their chance to uh, sort of play the game is by setting up the initial conditions. So here's what one of my level maps looks like. At the top I have how many rows, how many columns, and the time in milliseconds between game iterations. And this is the actual board. All the zeros indicate dead cells and the ones indicate alive cells. Okay. So we enter an input map, a level map, and we create this data structure, uh, this view data structure. View the view data structure has everything we need. It has a game structure which has all the information of the game, all the, you know, all the cells, whether or not they're alive or dead, and how many rows and columns there are, um, how much time between game iterations. And view also has all the display information, all the surfaces that will be displayed, which will allow the user to watch the game. Okay, so the first function that's called is right here, create game. So what create game does is it creates a, a game data structure which has row information, column information, uh, two sets of cell information. This first cells is the initial cells and all each successive iteration of the games uh, will update this value next cells. Okay, so what we do is we read in the input map. So if there was a zero, then we mark that cell as cell dead. If there was a one, we mark that cell as cell alive. Okay, so now that our game is created and we have no error messages, etc., uh, we uh, fetch the resource directory. This allows us to access the graphics for the games. And we come upon this function, view setup. What view setup does is it sets up the view. So, what do I mean by that? So, view setup initializes everything we need to actually watch the game. Okay, I used SDL as my library to do this. SDL stands for Simple Direct Media Layer. It allows for low-level access to the keyboard, the mouse, graphics, etc. Okay, so what View Setup does is it sets up everything we'll need to watch. So this initial uh, screen right here, it's what will actually be viewed. Um, you know, we, we set the caption, the info that goes on the top bar here. Uh, we get the font that I'm going to use, free sans, etc. Okay. So, back to the main function. 
assuming that the setup was fine, no issues, we go to this function view run. View run is um, really the heart of the program. It's where all the actual logic that I mentioned in the beginning actually plays out. It happens in view run. Okay, so what view run does is it it calls it calls this function update view. Update view, all it does is it displays the current state of the game. So it it'll draw the board and um, this function draw board, it just asks if a cell is alive, then draw a blue cell. If a cell is dead, then draw a white cell. We can look at that really quick. Oops. So draw the board. So if a cell is alive, draw a blue cell. If a cell is dead, draw a white cell. Okay. <laughs> So that's uh, draw board, and it also calls a function update score. What update score does, it's not really score, all it does is display how many uh, cells at any given time are alive. Okay, so that's update view. It just displays the current state of the game. Okay, so update view is called, and we have these conditional statements. Um, that determine whether or not we're going to quit the game. So if there are no cells that are alive, then the game quits, there's nothing else to watch. And if the user decides that he wants to quit, then the game quits, he exits out of the, out of the game. Okay, assuming that neither of those two happen, we call this function update. Okay, now what update does Update executes all of the game logic. So it takes in, it takes in our board uh, data structure and it calls this function numne, number of neighbors. And numne calculates, you know, for any given cell on the board, how many of its eight adjacent neighbors are alive. That value is stored in this int variable ne. Okay, and from that, um, we can execute the, the game logic. So rule one, if the cell is alive, die with zero or one neighbors. Rule two, if the cell is alive, live with exactly two or three neighbors. Rule three, if alive, die with greater than three neighbors. Uh, if a cell is dead and it has exactly three neighbors, then be alive on the next iteration. Okay, so that's update. So, within the view run, update is being called, update just gets called and it updates the entire uh, game data. It changes all the cells appropriately based on the, log based on the logic behind the game. Update view is called if we don't want to quit, update is called, update view is called if we don't want to quit, update is called, etc. So that's how the game uh, stays, you know, that's how the viewing rectangle is displayed on the screen and the user can just watch it. Um, so, so that's how it works. And then, you know, let's say the user X is out of the box or we run out of alive cells, then we have these functions view teardown and destroy game, which um, free any memory that was allocated during the program. Okay, so let's take, let's take a look at it. So I'm going to load the uh, level that I showed you uh, initially at the beginning of the game. So here we go. Blue cells indicate cells that are alive. White cells are cells that are dead. And we're displaying at any given time how many cells are alive, how many cells are dead. 
So you'll notice that there are some structures which are stable. For example, the two by two square. Each cell has exactly three neighbors. So this structure is stable as well as this one. Um, okay, there we go. We've, we've reached a stable state. And uh, that's all I have for you. That's my implementation of Conway's Game of Life. Thanks for taking the time.